So as of now, the committee has said we're, uh, uh, we uh, accept your appeal, but we're still charging you half. All right. Okay, we're on to. Thank you. Number 10. Consideration with possible action on General Ordinance Number 17-19, an ordinance creating sections 33.03, .03, subsection 4, and 33.05, subsection 10, Green Bay Municipal Code, relating to provisional licenses. Now, I didn't see anything in it's, our It's packet. not in the packet. I did I give a hard copy to, um, to the committee. We were working on it until 3.30 uh, this afternoon, so. Um, so, so um, state statute provides that the city is to issue provisional licenses, provisional retail liquor licenses, uh -huh. um, and that we may enact a process by which to do so via ordinance. Accordingly, we are presenting said ordinance draft, which delineates that process and circumstances under which a provisional retail license can be issued prior to the granting of a liquor license application, whether that be a new application <coughs> or a renewal. Um, so uh, kind of in general, um, it, it provides that, it appoints the city clerk um, can issue the provisional retail license, provided um, that the um, applicant has gained approval um, of the authorities that they normally would need to get approval from to get their regular license. Um, so it's for the interim period between um, when the actual liquor license application is approved and when um, they actually they apply for the for the application. Is that correct? Is, this also takes into account the renewal. This kind of addresses correct. what we've just been. Yes. Correct. So. Um, this so, still takes a 15-day waiting period, though, correct, or? We took no? the 15-day waiting period. So basically, the, the it will take as long there? as it takes in order to for inspections to be completed and for criminal background check or PD approval to be completed. Um, Good job. Trying to think what else, like major things. So just kind of going through the language. The qualifications require that the application has applied for, or the applicant has applied for a regular license, um, that they have um, a submitted an application for a provisional license, um, and they meet all of the licensing requirements set forth in the section, which includes one of the following conditions, that either protection policy has approved the applicant's regular license application, but final approval by the council still remains, um, the applicant has applied for a new regular license following the sale of an existing business that held a regular license of the same type and in order to contain or maintain continuity of business um, while the new application is pending, um, they're applying for this provisional. Um, with that, the applicant would have to prove to the clerk the uh, proof of control and or occupancy of the premise um, at which the provisional license is, is to be issued. Um, and third, the applicant held a uh, city uh, license of the same type during the expiring year um, and however did not timely submit a renewal application as a result of excusable neglect on the part of the applicant or lastly an administrative error caused by the city resulted in a delay in the application. Um, so. And then there's another section um, delineating um, all the different uh, conditions that have to be met, um, including being uh, qualified under Chapter 125.04, um, that they pay a $15 fee, that they get all necessary approvals from PD and from inspections, um, and that we currently aren't, that we actually do have licenses to give out, um, and that we're not past our reserves. Um, and the license would, the provisional would expire 60 days or when the regular license is approved, whichever is sooner. Um, and then the city clerk reserves the right to revoke the provisional at any time if he or she discovers that um, a false statement was made on the application. 
And in addition, if a false statement is made on the application, um, we will be providing an amendment in Chapter 33 that that would be um, grounds for uh, denying a new application. It wouldn't be possible to deny or uh, to non-renew based on that, but that would be a factor that could be considered to that if there is a false statement made on the provisional, um, that the new application that's pending should be denied based on that reason. So this was not handled at all before? Was this the first time? Yep. Right. We did not have any provisions. Um, when we started doing research, um, okay. it came up that a lot of municipalities don't have them, um, but it was something that was brought to our attention, and so um, it needed to be corrected. So you need from us? Hmm? You need just an approval? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so that it can be done. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, he just wanted Oh, to. on the vandalism. Right. Sorry, you were hot behind that thing. No, mm -hmm. we have quorum. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Motion to approve, second. So motion to approve by Alder Vandalese, second by Alder Stevens. So do you want to? Oh. Am I allowed to? Yes. Cool. Make a motion open the floor. Sorry about that. Alder Sawyer, second by Alder Van or uh, Stevens to Thanks, open the Give time for Randy to come back to you. Uh, Don, 641 North Huron Street, the pier, uh, Don Melvey. Um, I guess some questions I had, um, and this dealt with all very, just kind of going over what you said again, but uh, so the city clerk um, can approve an application. Granted, they got everything done and didn't have their license yet by um, the end of the license period. They can issue a license so long as they meet all the qualifications and one of those categories applies to them. Meaning that meaning that either P and P has approved them and they haven't been approved by council, or there is a transfer of business. So the premise has been currently licensed, the business is transferring, so for purpose of continuity. Um, third scenario would be there's a renewal. Renewal has not been filed on time. Excusable neglect or based on error. excusable right excusable neglect, which is a legal standard. Or fourth category, there's been administrative error caused by the city, resulting in a delay. And then the other, so one of those four categories has to apply, and then the applicant has to meet all the other qualifications that are listed in sub B. So obviously this is for current applicants, not for new applicants. Like if somebody applies for a new license towards the end of the period? Both. It would oh, okay, cover it would both. cover both. Okay. But okay. be clear about the, about the new applicant. Right. So there's two conditions for a new applicant. One right. is continuation of business and the other one is? That they've been approved by PMP. Right, but then right. There's, a, there's a lag time in between. Perfect. And $15? Yes. Fifteen dollars. Yes, okay. that's the and statutory max. Sixty days can be revoked if anybody lies about anything. Right, or the application gets approved by council or denied, or denied, by, or denied council. by council. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to kind of go with the specific. Part. So, are you good with it? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Right. Thanks, thanks. So. Motion that goes four. Motion by Alder Sawyer, seconded by Alder Vanderlees. Close the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you're back in time. Yeah. So, so we have a motion to. Yeah, some questions from the Pathway Association was happy to satisfy with this. Yeah. So, thank you. So, make things much smoother in the future. We had some bumps just a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully, this will help. I'll make the motion to approve. Can we just vote on that? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. We had a motion and then. Um, we said a motion. Yes, then we had a motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> so I, I've been reading things and just wondering how how did we get here? Is it because establishments forgot to turn in their license applications? Or, I mean, how. How do, how do you forget to do that? Well, I've not so much forgot or for, there, could, there could be a number of reasons why for I know one instance where uh, the manager who was in charge of this uh, was uh, had breast cancer and the, so there the was owner a reasons. Yeah, there, there are all kinds of reasons and it might be just that 
they got busy and slipped up. I mean, I, I don't really care for the what the reasons are. I don't care about the practical application here as long as the, the concern was that we're enabling incompetent businesses, right? If sure, you, that can be a concern. Right, yeah. and, and uh, I think as long as we're dealing with a business that um, this is a first oopsie, whatever the reason, uh, uh, this will help us cover that and uh, as long as we don't have an ongoing pattern, which we then can then take into account uh, when we uh, uh, address these things. So, so you, you look at each thing with this ordinance, right. we look at each case individually and, right. and we're doing this because the state has a 15, that 15 day rule, right. but yet we're also allowed to have an ordinance like this. Mm -hmm. So it's just for, okay, all right. I, I'm glad to hear that it wasn't just because they were pretty irresponsible. There were really good reasons behind why some of these like there, there may have been there may some, have been. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that we're kind of talking about two different things. So mm -hmm. the the um, the late renewals, we'll call them, um, is is one thing, but the, the statute the state statute requires us to have a provisional license ordinance. Okay. So that's what this is. This isn't at all related to the individual applications that came in late. Those are, there are some meetings later this week. Right, I'm, I'm on the committee for some of them. But, but just for the purpose of, of this particular ordinance, it's not meant to address any of those in particular. Okay, that I understood. It's for future things, right? Correct. Right. If they yeah, come. yeah I, I was aware of that. All right, thank you. Motion to approve by Alder. Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Yeah, uh, looks very good. Thank you, staff. Really appreciate it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Item number 11. Number 11. Consideration with possible action and request by Alder Galvin. To the Protection and Policy Committee to have a procedure for all those to be notified when petitions and communications are going to be addressed at the committee level, which is held at the June 10th Protection and Policy Meeting. Alder Galvin. Good evening. I was going to have to get a sleeping bag. Yeah. <laughs> Almost said good morning. Folks, <laughs> all I'm looking for is uh, I've put in communications to staff in the past, and I know that we are shorthanded throughout the uh, city hall with staff. And some of these communications get pushed back quite a bit. In fact, I've had a couple that have been waiting for over a year. What I don't want to have happen is I put in a communication, a lot of time goes by, it comes up on agenda, I happen to miss it because it's not the very next meeting. You guys sit here, the alderman doesn't show up, now what are you doing? You know, receive and place on file, we start the process all over again, this kind of stuff. So I'm looking for something where I, I know when uh, an item comes up on um, the appeals, I get notified with a letter that this item is coming up on appeals, it's in your district, it's something. So something to say that, yeah, you had this item, you put it in there, and it's coming up on this date, so you know that if you can't be there, you can ask to have a change, have someone fill in for you, or at least so you don't miss it. Because we've wasted a lot of time um, in the past. We have. People that just for some reason things come up, they don't show up. And I think it wastes the committee time, it wastes staff time to have them do a lot of work. And so I don't want to have that happen in the future. I had an idea last time, but no one wanted to go forward until we ran it by you. All right. The idea was that, uh, if I remember right, uh, <laughs> um, that if a communication was set to staff, or put on hold for whatever reason, mm -hmm. that it would be noticed every meeting that that community so we wouldn't lose track of it it would always be on every agenda that it's being looked okay. at by staff that is being uh, until it's all okay. ready so, to come so, so it would be listed but listed, listed as still on hold still right. on hold right so that and way everybody knows what the status staff doesn't have to really worry about I mean, I think it's just easier to keep track well, of it that and, way that, it's and that's actually probably a good idea because it might remind me after like six months that hey, let's check in with staff and find out. Well, 
maybe something happened, staff got sick or it got lost or you know they got they switched positions and it got lost in the in the right. in the mix up. So yeah, actually that's that's probably a better idea. I uh, I don't have an issue with that. I guess I would leave it up to you guys then to hash that one out. Yeah, because I I think if we if we just set it up to staff and staff is working, well they may it's putting another burden on them. Whereas right. this way it's just automatically. Right. Yep, go ahead. Bill, I, I remember some years ago, um, you know, up in Planet, Kevin Bond, he would, bring, he would send out, you know, we'd, we'd put in communications and that, and he would talk about the planning projects, but it seemed like he would follow up and say, okay, this this is going on. Each, but that was the only department that did it that I knew of. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with you, because I've put in communications, and if I don't write it down or keep track, you know, it, it'll just kind of, a lot of times it'll just disappear. So I like Randy's idea of at least having it so that it's listed on each agenda, so right. that you have that. But I still think there's got to be, it would be nice to have a, a spreadsheet or something out there with all of the various communications. or something, and I realize it's that each office is separate. You can do something like Meister Task, but I just think that creates more work for right. staff right. than right. trying to keep it updated and everything right. else. I mean, just everyone's so got their system, and I guess if we were to notice that maybe one department was having trouble getting stuff up to, to a committee and then to council in a timely fashion, that could be addressed on a, on a separate issue. But I, I think most departments and most employees within those departments have their own systems, and I think they tend to work good. It's just, you know, in the hierarchy of what's most important, triage, you know, the, this this one goes, and so your item may just get pushed is back that, for all. Of is that time. something that might be dealt with within the mayor's office now that we have Derek there as well? Well, they can certainly work with that. Or Jared, I'm sorry. Um, okay. No, I mean I'm just <laughs> asking if that might be a possibility. Um, I've heard a couple of different things. So, which possibility are you? Well, I'm just saying if, if communications are brought in, if there mm -hmm. was some kind of catch-all group that would have a list of all the communications that come through. Well, that would be Chris Teske. Well, well not all, as a matter of fact, Chris and I were talking about this today. Uh -huh. um, we will address this at senior staff on Thursday. Um, Just the best way to do it. Well, well, because communications are coming in in various places. They don't all come to the clerk's office. They, uh -huh. There is no central, currently, unless it goes to a council agenda, there is no current central location for communications. So, how would a communication get on the agenda if it doesn't go to Chris? I to go to the to the staff to the um, chairman. Chair, of the but then I, the chair always gives it to Chris, right? No, the chair can give it to the person and the, the the person in the department that takes care of the agenda, which could be the director. It could be, you know, um, someone like uh, Wendy Townsend, who isn't director, but she handles the the uh, EDA to the Eugene Bobbin Loan Fund. I was just saying, you focus. I, I would like to really see it central somehow. So this is something that we're going to discuss as senior staff. If you'd like me to talk to you about it, sure. Um, <coughs> and then. Well, we, we can get back to the all. committee here because I think yeah, you know, because I, I, I mean, I remember putting in the thing for consent agendas. Just write it down, Bill, so it doesn't yeah. get lost. But consent agenda is completely <laughs> separate from what you're talking about. No, no. no well, it's so a communication that was put in, and it, we're still hanging on it. No, we. We've never. We never made a decision on it. The consent agenda. I think it was. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Well, came to council. We did. We rejected the consent agenda. Boy, where was I at? Yeah, we asked ourselves a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what is your pleasure? Should we hold this? Um, um, it, it could be just referred refer to, to staff. Refer so the staff is going to be discussing right. it, and then, and, and then okay. we can That's go over that. I, go with that. I mean, I'm not looking for a rapid decision, right, right. But, I, but something well thought out that doesn't yeah. let anything slip through the cracks, right. that just keeps things moving along, and then not having alders miss their agenda right. item when it comes to yeah. committee. That's, that's all I'm looking for. Yeah. So, well, I'd make a motion to that effect with the stipulations that Randy had brought up, you know, about you know, having it documented somehow. And in the agenda. In we, the agenda. That would be which one we point. Could and do, then also I mean, a central, yeah, central yeah. place. That, that's something to consider. Central place, but but yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely something for staff to consider, but you know, I mean, 
If they can come up with a different Yeah, item. absolutely. I'm open to anything that, that just gets That's my motion. All right. Thanks. Mental that would be a motion for staff and create a policy items that are referred to staff on the applicable agenda for staff to update as to status until the item has been completed. Yep. Uh, motion by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder uh, Vanderleest. We're all good? Yes. Everybody, uh, all everybody uh, approved? Aye. Aye. Everybody Aye. not approved? No, nope. that passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yep. 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 Do you know when El Pastor Cito? Yeah. Yeah. That's um, coming up. That's gonna be no. That's tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. But they should have gotten received another notice from the. Yeah, I thought she reached out. Yeah, yeah she, she did. Out she called. I know that she called everybody. But here, I'll come. Thanks, Chris. All right, we're on to number 13. 13. 13 and then 12. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But. Or, no, I'm sorry. I skipped 12. <laughs> Yeah, well, we are so on to number 12. And then we got to go back. I mean, why are they out of order? Is that just a just clerical mistake? And, and does it really matter if we went to Wait, we are out of order? Yeah, order. it's 13 is next and then 12. You can say that you're out of order. Yeah. So, but does it really matter? Do we do 13 12 is and 12? Alder Dorfs. Okay. So in my system, 12 is what 12 should be. 12 is Alder Dorfs communication. And number, right. number 13 is Alder Johnson's communication. Right, but in our listing here, 13 comes before 12. Okay. In my system, it, it could just be an error in the system. Right. On my system, 12. So, but does it really matter which way we go? No, I'll just set current for 12 just to keep it in order. That's okay. So item number 12. Okay. That's right. I can't read them. You know, I think I've got to scroll it up a little and I'm going to scroll it down a little. All right. Discussion with possible action on a request by Alderdorf, which reads, I believe that steps must be taken to ensure that infrastructure projects, including but not limited to those that we, the wheel tax will fund, must be chosen very carefully and be placed into a capital improvement plan. I'm requesting that P&P, Protection Policy, develop policy with the help of DPW, legal, and other appropriate staff. This policy must be developed so that the special interests and requests of individual <coughs> alders do not subvert the process of choosing the projects and that have been carefully researched by city staff as being appropriate for placement in a five-year plan. Parameters for choosing streets to be repaired, reconstructed, or resurfaced, as well as other infrastructure improvements should be clearly identified within this policy, which was referred to staff at, uh, at a previous protection and policy committee meeting. So staff, do we have anything together at all? Uh, no. Okay, um, so Alder a member of DPW would be here to speak to this item. I'm not seeing anybody. Do you guys remember when yeah. we yeah, talked yeah, about this? And it was, I was told, you know, because I thought it would take a while, and then Director Grenier said, nope, it's not going to take any time at all. It's already basically done. But you might even have a baby at the time, or two babies. Perhaps. Yeah, I don't remember so, this item. So yeah, I don't think I, you were I here. Yes, you, you were not here. You were not here. Okay. So this is. All we can do right now is refer this to staff to get a policy. And, and according to Director Grenier, they, they have all the ideas, and it should not take much to put it together. And I had hoped he'd be here tonight, mm -hmm. or someone from DPW, mm -hmm. but they're not. So I think we just have to move this to the next meeting, if that's okay. Right. Yeah, but we'll and this to item staff. could be potentially, I'm not sure if, if Director Grenier had a, had a conflict and wasn't able to attend. Um, but this item can always be pulled at council, and Director Pierre oh. will be on hand to answer too. So, right. I, but, I, I think we should do the committee work. Okay. In the committee, though. Sounds good. So I feel like we should bring it back here. Okay. Okay. So motion to hold to next. Well, refer to staff. Refer to staff. Okay. Refer to staff. Refer to staff. Refer to staff. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. The only thing I'd like to see is that if we're talking roads and everything, that I know 
they have gone through, but the old policy used to be when we did special assessments, after three or two or three asks, that street went to the bottom of the pile. That was a practice, that wasn't a policy. They well, just, they did it as they think it was a past practice. I had clarified that, right? And so well, we don't have to be held at anything that we necessarily right, right. did in the and past. Streets maybe should be repaired when they're bad. That's when they're what bad. my concern is. Yes. I would like to make sure we're starting from scratch. Absolutely. And all streets are all equal now, and, and we judge the ones that right. are the worst. That's exactly <clears throat> yeah. what I. That, that's the only thing I want to make sure is that we're not leaving those. And we'll we'll have those discussions in committee right. when we get yep. a policy. We'll level policy. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. The motion. motion by Alder Stoyer to refer to staff. Second by Alder Vandalese. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Have fun. Now 13. Now 13. A request by Alder Johnson for consideration of possible action on the creation of a safe park initiative that permits overnight parking for those who may have consumed too much alcohol in an effort to deter drunk driving incidents. <coughs> the examples are Seattle, we have a link, Colorado, we have a link. This item referred to staff from the previous protection of policy committee meeting. Alder Johnson. Hey, Good how are you? Good morning. Good. Good. How are you? So this was uh, an idea that uh, came to me from the Brown County Tavern League. Don's gonna speak on this in a minute, but um, I think the concept is pretty clear. We just wanna be able to um, give people a safe option for those who have found themselves in an unfortunate circumstance, um, rather than giving them or forcing them into a choice of having to drive their car or uh, some other terrible decision, we'd like to um, obviously give them that ability to leave their car and park safely for the night, not be subjected to a parking ticket um, I've been uh, I've shared this quite publicly I've received a lot of uh, warm reception to it uh, people are very excited about it seems like a common-sense approach to um, I guess one mechanism or one way to keep people off the streets we've uh, uh, had a very productive meeting with um, the parking division with public works with the police department uh, and the Brown County Tavern League we kind of vetted out a number of um, scenarios if you will um, you know, hey, what if this happens? What if that happens? And how do we respond and react to that? I feel like we came up with a pretty sound plan proposal uh, that I'm going to actually let Don go into a little bit more detail with. But um, I think, you know, for me, at the end of the day, this isn't necessarily about creating a free pass for those those folks who have maybe made intentional uh, decisions to find themselves inebriated. This is really about protecting people on the streets who didn't have a choice. And and so, if we can find a way to keep folks off the streets. Uh, who have, who, who again, have, have consumed too much alcohol and protect those those innocent lives who are on the street, uh, I think to me that is a win-win all around, so. Was it just a real quick answer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, this is something that I've talked about with some other bar owners downtown as well, and would there be some kind of a system where there'd be a placard or something handed out? Yes. To say, we'll, we'll pick it up tomorrow or, or what have you? Something like that. Yeah, yeah I'll down speak to the specifics of it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah he'll work, okay. But yeah, we've got that all figured out. Right. And that was, again, this was done uh, through that joint meeting uh, with all of those respective entities that would have some type of oversight touches program in some way, and I felt that we walked out of that meeting, um, again, not only with a really good dialogue, but everybody kind of nodding their heads yes, that this is, this is a program that we feel could effectively work here in Green Bay. It's had great success in other cities like uh, Seattle, Austin, a number of cities in Colorado. No reason that I don't think it couldn't work here. Uh, are you looking for us to refer this to staff to come back with something, or I feel we've got something. I mean, you've got we're something. ready, right, Don? I, I, do I have to open the floor? Or, uh, yeah, well, I'll yeah. open the floor in a minute. But if you've got something, then we just once we get it, we put that together and that's that. Okay, sure. That's what you're looking for. That's what we do. Okay. One quick question. Yes, sir. I want the fire department to be back in with the fire department as well. Um, was the fire department at the meeting? I don't believe that they were, no. You know, um, we, we talked about this once before, and uh, the fire department did mention that, you know, in certain areas, like close to the stadium district, that the streets are so narrow that they could hardly get their vehicles down. So you may want to just reach out to the fire department sure. before we get it all final. And this wouldn't apply in scenarios uh, like that. And one of the primary reasons is because it actually has to be a uh, Brown County Tavern League member that issues the, the safe park permit. So if you can imagine in that scenario, uh, particularly in those residential neighborhoods, uh, I mean, it would have to be homeowners that are giving out the permit, and, and that's obviously not going to be the case. 
uh, there has to be a sort of a central place that can kind of help regulate the, the issuance of those permits and uh, we feel that that's probably our best partner at this point um, to, to kind of help ensure that we regulate it so that it's a program that doesn't become abused. Okay. Yep, yep, go ahead. I'll go. Just a question, are you booting me? I'm more than booting you, it's standard. Right. But um, I just want to give my support to this because I was on the AOD task force with the police department, and this is an idea that we had come up with at the time. And so we didn't get any traction on it. We yeah. talked about it. You might have been at those meetings. No, no maybe it was a different president. I think there was a different president at the time. Well, she was, right. yes. And so we thought it was a really great idea. And somehow it just didn't go any further. Some of our other ideas happened, but that one didn't. So I'm very supportive of this. Thank you. Any other questions? No, well, maybe we'll, 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 we'll have to hear the plan first. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear Open the floor. So, so uh, motion to open the floor. Next. By Alder Stevens. Seconded by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The floor is open. Good night, gentlemen. Is Plan me. These are just for study, not to you. Yeah, this is just uh, something oh, I put on. together in the last few hours. No, it's been together for a while. I just printed it off today. Um, Don Meldy, 641 North, you're on the first class. So, um, brought this forward a couple years ago, saw the bat again this year, and made a lot of traction with it. Obviously, um, this would be uh, numbered and had years on it, and would go to different uh, tavern league bars. And if somebody had too much to drink and they're getting a responsible means home, we would put this up on the advisor and they would have waived the 3 to 5 a.m. parking ban. So um, specifically just the 3 to 5 a.m. Uh, Washington Street. After talking to the parking division and the police department also, it has its own set of rules that have to be monitored and regulated and modified. So um, I at least got a little bit more uh, far, further in advance than, uh, than it is right now. And things are trending in the right direction in Brown County. Um, I'm on the Brown County Traffic Safety Commission as well. I maintain place of last drink, and it goes over all the OWI convictions. In Brown County the last year, and so far this year, we are down 126 compared to last year, so it's 27% decrease, which is awesome. So we're just trying to keep things trending in the right direction. So uh, I don't know what we're here for specifically. I do know through Chris Perlott from the Traffic Division that we're going to an INS meeting. On Wednesday, does that sound right? Could be. So yeah. we're going to go to INS too? Yeah, so INS is Wednesday at 6. Oh, that's confusing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. so, I found out this parking. parking division oversees it. Maybe. Yep. So then what is it we're doing? This is where it was originally referred. Oh, it is. It, is it, it was originally referred here with the assumption that it was going to be an ordinance change, but staff had since confirmed that this could be an administrative thing that they could enact. So we will actually pass a, take a I'm pass. I'm going to defer to legal on why it's here then. Why it needs to stay no. here. It, it doesn't need to stay here. We can just receive and place in a file. Uh, the uh, item has been picked just, up by the The reason we made this is because there's no change in legislation. This is just yeah. something that we can do and the parking division will okay. acknowledge. So we're not uh, changing the law at all. This is just something they do. And, and I went through Chris Perlott and Steve Grenier from the parking division and Captain Ward from the police department and everybody's given on board. I will talk to the area fire departments and reassure them. That is just for you know commercial businesses and side streets and that are staying off fire hydrants and and all the like. So, can I yeah. ask one quick question? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Don, so Brown County Tavern League. There's how many? What percentage of taverns are Brown County? Tavern? Uh, we have 154 members currently, and it's a. Uh, um, I believe there's 398 in Brown County, but then you're talking about the ones out in yep. Denmark. Right. And uh, exactly. as far as municipality yeah. ratio, I'm not quite positive. I'd have to look at that. But all right. But it would be nice to. Have buy-in yeah but yeah. that's that's another story yeah exactly hmm. all right that's good that's all good. and i see some of the concerns that were risen in the past yeah. that sunk this are being addressed here so yeah uh, like we've talked about this. yeah the extreme weather and all that and emergency stuff so yeah, yeah there's definitely stipulations to it yeah, obviously yeah. you can't be out there in extreme weather yeah. certain situations and so, it's going to yeah. be placed visibly obviously it's going to have the day clearly visible in the year so it's going to yeah. be for one night only not for multiple nights yeah. like and, and, and in the past when this did come up um there, there was an effort to try and steer people to certain like to park in the ramp 
Yeah. And uh, is that still going to be yeah, part absolutely. of this initiative? Matter of fact, Chris Perlow is working on an interactive map that's going to be throughout the city that shows places where people can park for the evening. For instance, on Broadway by the viaduct, um, there's a parking space there. Not a lot of people know about it. They can park right. overnight without right. us having to do this yeah. for them as well. So uh, yeah, we're working through them and hopefully the CDB will jump in and, and be able to show us at their place also that there are places to park overnight throughout the city. So. Have you seen other communities that might have done something like this? Um, not specifically like this. I just kind of played off of what I found through my research through uh, what Brian was alluding to in Seattle and Austin and Colorado that, you know, these big cities are working on a way, so we should be able to do one ourselves as well. Okay. Yeah. Buy a duck. Buy another chicken. <laughs> Marks, what are we just, Marks what are we Brothers, it's a classic. Come on. Motion to receive and place Based on file by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Vanderleaf. Yeah, yep, go ahead. Two more comments, four, points of clarification. So yeah. one is, I think... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The floor needs to be closed. But. Motion to close the floor. Oh, right. We opened it for... Yep. Motion to close the floor by Alder Thank Stoyer. You. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the floor is closed. And motion so, so motion to, to receive a place on file by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Vanderleest. And before we vote, we yep. I just want to make two points of clarification and two questions that uh, both of you gentlemen had, had brought up. One is, um, we are, as part of this dialogue, we did determine that it was important for us to continue to proactively promote locations where people could park. I think it's important to note that this is more of a reactive policy uh, that you have in front of you. And so we hope that, of course, the, the proactive approach combined with the reactive approach gives us a more holistic way to help curb uh, incidents that, that might create unfortunate circumstances. The other piece of it, uh, Alder Stoyer, to your point, uh, right now we felt that the Brown County Tavern League, uh, with their expertise, has a way to help train people on how to properly uh, deploy this particular policy. Um, your question is the exact same one that I brought up, and, and uh, how can we ultimately get this unrolled out to anybody that, that is able to participate? And I think, to me, that would be, continue to be a long-term goal with seeing as how this is an administrative policy that can be enacted. I think this is a great place to start where you can do a proof of concept, uh, determine what works, what may not be working with the program, and adequately adjust before we, we roll it out to to every participating organization in the city. And I did want to mention, I was with uh, Alder Dorf on that committee as well, and we bounced that around quite a bit, but I'm glad that is that something's moving forward, so. Good, all right. All right, we both want all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that is received and placed it on file. Good luck at INF. And we're on for 14. Correct. Consideration is possible action or request by Alderdorf to perform a short term task force led by the police department, including fire, alders, uh, risk management, Celestine Jeffries, and other important stakeholders to review the security practice of the city building and the city employees to determine what changes and training are needed to ensure that our municipal buildings, municipal buildings are safe and secure for both employees and the public. Thank you. So um, on May 